Hello, and welcome to the first of three posts in which we will cover the fundamentals of reading legal descriptions. Understanding legal descriptions is vital in land record related work, and to understand legal descriptions, it is necessary to first understand the public land surveying system. Just a quick bit of history before we begin. The public land surveying system was proposed by Thomas Jefferson. The purpose of the PLSS was for the delineation of land. As the United States expanded westward, this is how land was divided among settlers and today is the base of all legal descriptions. At ProWest, we work to build a detailed land record system with our government clients. Having a good working PLSS is the foundation for building these records, whether it's a tax parcel, a subdivision, or anything related to land records. Before we move on, I want to state that there are different types of surveying systems throughout the United States. For an example, the original 13 colonies use what is called the colonial system, which is based on landmarks. But we are going to focus on the public domain system because it is used throughout most of the United States. The public domain system delineates in a consistent and equitable fashion, or in a simpler term, it uses what is called a grid system. The PLS begins with the concept of a grid, roughly based on latitude and longitude. Throughout the United States, there are baselines, lines parallel of latitude, and meridian lines, lines of longitude. Each township is 6 miles by 6 miles in size. The township value is determined by how far north or south you move from the baseline. As you can see here, where the township is labeled, it is township 2 north, making it two boxes in our grid system north of the baseline. The range value is determined by how far east or west you move from the meridian line. Again, where it is labeled, you see it is three boxes in our grid system west of the meridian line, making this township 2 north, range 3 west. Each township is then broken down into 36 square mile sections. Section count begins at the northeast corner of the township and snakes back and forth through the entire township. A section is further subdivided into four quarter sections. A quarter section is one half mile by one half mile and consists of 160 acres. Each quarter section is identified by its location in the section. So as you can see by your diagram, we have the northeast, the northwest, the southwest, and the southeast. Again, these are being identified by where they are within the section. A quarter section is then again divided into four quarter sections. Each quarter quarter is 1,320 feet by 1,320 feet and consists of 40 acres. It is identified again by where it was located within that quarter section. So as you can see here, we have the northwest of the southwest, the southwest of the southwest, the southeast of the southwest, and the northeast of the southwest. Again, these are all being identified by where they are located within this southwest corner. Finally, we have government lots. These are usually irregular portions of section formed by meandered bodies of water. And as you can see, we have a meandered river and a meandered lake. And you can see that the government lots are labeled from 1 to 14 within this diagram. And just a quick note for the number numbering of government lots, they start at one in every section. They do not continue to the next one. The other use of government lots is the correction of the township. Townships are developed starting at the southeast corner. When dividing up the townships, surveyors use the far north and the far west lines to correct errors due to the curvature of the earth. Meaning that there are government lots not only around meandered bodies of water, but also on the north and the west lines of a township. And as you can see by this diagram, we have the north and west line of a township with government lots on it. I want to thank you for listening, and I hope this is a helpful introduction to the public land surveying system. Look for more upcoming posts diving deeper into reading legal descriptions.